this is really exciting. <laughs> uh, so, who here has heard of Marit Santemo? Okay, four hands. Who here has heard of uh, East Kofi? Whoa, okay. Who here has heard East Kisu? The one person who was my co host. <laughs> Good job. So, who am I? I am Dr. Hunker. I am an internet cat lady from 2012. That's when I started teaching and found an outlet for my frustration by looking up cat memes. Um, I got my own cat after a lot of people thought it was a bit weird that I loved cats, but I actually never owned the cat. So, I gave in to peer pressure and got my own cat. Her name is Sherman. Um, yeah, I. I basically got into podcast in 2016, in the springtime, and then, because I'm a bit ambitious with my hobbies, I became a podcast host in, by end of year. So, yeah. So, East Kisir, it's basically a book club. It's me and my best friends. It's Birna, who is here in the audience, and Kristin in the center, who is not here, but is represented by this <laughs> so, um, we are a feline entertainment um, literary podcast where we discuss the erotic novella that is The Legend of the Ice People. I have all of the books on the stage here. These are the original books from the 80s. So, in each episode, we cover parts of the book. We started very ambitious and started with um, one episode per book. There are 47 books. We did not really kind of see the measure of like how long term are we going to do this. So we sort of do it with fast paced. So we cover the book or part of the book. And then to conclude the episode, I would tell my friends about an internet cat or some interesting fact about cats because there are many. So here are two very known cats. Do you know these cats? No. This is Tartar Sauce and Lillian Bubbles. Also known as Grumpy Cat and Little Bub. They're quite cute. They're both felines. Both female, like lighter. They're female cats. They're not male. Although you might assume that. Okay. So, this is the timeline. From 1982 to 1989, Market Sandemar releases 47 books on the legend of the ice people. And in 2016, we founded East Kisses. Then we did basically six months of rehearsals because we were quite shy, because none of us are actually literary experts. We are all engineers. And they didn't feel like there was imposter syndrome. We didn't feel like we had a place in the in this realm. Should we really be talking about the legend of the ice people? What do we know? We're just some girls. But um, in the spring, we contacted Ragnar Hansson at Alvarpe and asked him if they would be interested to having us on. And lo and behold, he was very keen. So we stopped at Alvarpe. And so, Almarfit, do you know Almarfit? Yeah. Do you know Hapnetish? Englaric? Yes, so it's like basically Hulu Blackson and other like, and famous Icelandic people are there and then us. <laughs> uh, so, but basically, we're doing good things. So, we start here and into 2018, we basically, there's a little sickness here, so that's why we're kind of. And there are like lost episodes and we're self-producing, so it's a bit, you know, it's a bit hectic. But at this time point, Storytel releases The Legend of the Ice People as ebooks. And they are very popular. And people are probably reading them and listening to us. All three. And then in the fall, we get an email which we think was a prank, but it's actually a real email from a person at Storytel saying that they like the show, they've listened to it, and they are interested to having us on. And they're actually willing to produce us and pay us money <laughs> and be in their studio, which is kind of amazing. So we are the first of three podcasts, so it's um, 
Ithil Jökulsson, and then some other guy talking about the proper literary experts, and then us, doing <laughs> the Ice Cats, because this is their most listened to content on Story. Mm. And yeah, I'm surprised, but there, it's, it's fun. I recommend it. Do listen to it. Even though you don't listen to Ice Cats, listen to He's Wicked. It's yeah. hilarious. So, this is when they start producing their audiobooks, and then this is when we come in to Storyfest. If you are wondering what these little faces are, this is when we are born. This is me. This is Christine. She just had her birthday a couple days ago. And then this is Bitta. This, These are the books that our mothers could have been reading at the time of conception. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you some indication like what was going on in Dalton Gaylands for Pop Swinging. I did the, read the expert report, it wasn't really exciting, it wasn't left out. This is when I had my first child, and basically I was releasing Blowhand at the time. <laughs> it's about Vicky May, a very exciting persona. Maybe that's going to be somehow characterized in my son's wild upbringing, I don't know. <laughs> time will tell. So, this is just backstory, but now let's get into data. So, the book series. All of these images are courtesy of Dolly via Bing. I am very happy with the results. Hooray for prompt tuning. So, Maria Sandbo is a Norwegian Swedish author. So, she's born in Norway, but she lived in Sweden and she only, well, she wrote in Swedish. She started writing at the age of 40. So, she's a relatively late bloomer. But she did blue. She wrote <laughs> so much content, it's ridiculous. But of the, the series that we covered, it's The Legend of the Ice People from 1982 to 89, 47 books. That's quite impressive. And then she took a couple of years off before, or like, she probably did some like in between work. And then she did The Warlock and The Legend of the Realm of Light. So for us, Icelandic speakers, these are Galdramistare or Iriki Yossis. I have not read these books because after the 47, I kind of got fed up. But <laughs> after preparing for this presentation, I really want to read them. And we should restart the podcast. So, publications. So here we have, as a function of time, each publication in Iceland and the page cut. So she starts quite ambitious. The first book is by far the best book. And it's like 250 or maybe 40 pages. Then she basically realizes she can't keep up this much content. <laughs> so there's a very steady decline. And then around 86, she kind of figures like, okay, this is getting weird, and then she runs it back up. It's very predictable. It was almost always 14 chapters. So when we did the reviews, we would always read the first seven chapters for the first part, and then the remainder for the second part. And yeah, so on average, it's 170 pages per book. And it's a small book. <laughs> so basically, uh, Couple of meanings at most. But 8,000 pages, 650 chapters, and a release every two months. That's pretty good. And on Tuesdays. I don't know, there's some marketing going on having it on Tuesdays. So the ice people, 17th generations, 17th generations, we start with. Think it the good and Celia Arkinsdottir, the foremother of the of the yeah of the people of the ice, and then a lot of inbreeding. Which is <laughs> <laughs> nice because then you can fit into a slide and it kind of makes sense. Um, the um, the solid boxes they are the people that have the bad seed. So basically, because the legend of the ice people, they were set from the 1500s onwards to almost like, to then present day, and they are very tempted 
to have sex with your cousins. <laughs> and this is the theme throughout the books. But Margaret is aware that you shouldn't have sex with your cousins, so to make it interesting, if you have sex with your cousin, you're very likely to get some kind of genetic defect, which in this case are yellow cat-like eyes. Coincidence? We have a cat podcast. It's all making sense. We did not know this going on, so it was a very fun surprise. Um, and basically, it means that they have supernatural powers. They are like magic. They're either witches or warlocks, and yeah. So. But you have, so when you, if, when they realize that you have the yellow eyes, are you a good person? Or are you an evil person? Or will you be bad and turn good? So, let's check. Oh, just by the way, we have, where is he? Lucifer is in the books. The, the fallen angel, Lucifer, appears in the books. He lives in Iceland for some reason. <laughs> it's all covered in the books. It's very, it's a fascinating read. Um, so, because this is hard, trying to realize, like, if you look at the statistics, like, what are the odds of a uh, bad seed happening, like, so far between? It's not very regular. It's because time-wise, on the Gantt chart, there is always, almost always, someone with the bad seed present. At most, there are six, but that doesn't really count because Mob has the special gift and he's from another family that's like far away, but they're off the top of the family. So they are the ancestors of these ancestors, but, and they have, they have sex with Shira, but she, if they don't have a seat, I don't know. So, they, so that explains why there's so many, but yeah. So, but it's convenient. It doesn't really have more than 20 people alive any time in the books. So you don't have to keep track of too many people at a time. Because it does do accounting throughout the books. Most books, you will have, like each person of the book will have a book that's specialized in them. Like, this is Vitlime's book, and this is Sunna's book, right, where she is the main persona. Vitlime does get like two or three books, and Sunna gets two, because they're very special. Heike gets like a couple, and then the rest will get like one. So, it's, it's very convenient. Lifespan, the average woman lives shorter than the man, surprisingly, but women tend to die from childbirth because the bad seed are known to have triangular um, shoulders. <laughs> so, there, there's a logical explanation for everything. Um, they are quite old. There's one centurion, couple of to ninety, but like the majority are quite. They, they live for a very long time or have horrible deaths very early on. They're they're not risk averse. Like they really like to you know get into the line of fire. Um, they do have children at a very late age, considering when this is written, and like when this is supposed to happen. But it's because they are quite scared to give birth. They know, kind of know, as soon as they have sex and have a kid that is going to happen, the woman will die. <laughs> so, are they willing to risk it? Yes. The answer is always yes. There's only like a couple of relationships that doesn't result in a child, so it's, yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's very typical. The woman is generally younger than the man, usually by three years. And, yeah. So let's go to the book club. Oh, is there a question? Uh, just, yeah, the bottom there says that 22 kids have either no father or no mother. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> like, like, they are, like, they have, they're uh, illegitimate. Like, there's like an unknown father or an unknown mother. So, basically, so in one case, like, if you go back, just to give you. So, um, Salve, what do I find? Salve. Hey, yeah, Salve. He has sex with a prostitute, he has an evil demon child, and she sends the demon child back to him, which he keeps in a locked box. <laughs> so, yes, he doesn't have a mother, but. 
obviously a mother existed, but she kind of like, I do not like these yellow eyes. Kick it. And it's kept in a kennel. Interesting books, though. Very interesting stories. Um, so, the book club. So these are Dolly representing my friends and my cat, Sherman Hill, writing a podcast set in the northern middle ages. Um, yeah. There's a lot of comment. If you like this, there's a lot of comment. In my study. Um, so there is, so over 46 months, we taped a lot. <laughs> of that, 7,762 minutes are publishable. <laughs> or 5.4 days of continuous streaming. Please listen on Storytel Weekend Royalties. <laughs> so, we are, so basically when we start, we take less content. We are like, we like to keep below the hour mark because for some internal reasons we thought going past an hour is bad. And then when we went to Storytel, we made an agreement, a legal contract saying we will not go past the hour mark. So we try to keep it there. And basically, if there's like more than an hour, it's because it's a really boring book and we overcompensated with additional tangents. And they were actually the most fun parts. But for the books that were straightforward and not really much to discuss, they are shorter. Next one, Alba Fit. So I don't have the exact listeners on iTunes. I just had from my source, there were roughly 900 to 1,000 people listening to the show, but what I do have are the number of streams from the browser. So if you listen to the podcast from within Nuntimen, which Alpha is a syndicated podcast of, it's basically 40 people. <laughs> Very phenomenal stuff. Sorry. <laughs> One third of you here would listen to it. And, and here you can see how we, we started like, one chapter of book, and then realizing we're never going to sustain this. So then we do three chapters at once. But when we go to Storytel, right, things are different. We have proper audio, we are taping in the studio, there's a, a person outside the bus that's listening and editing. And then we get these phenomenal ratings 4.74 out of 5. Damn. Not bad. I guess. And 50, like more than half of a perfect score. And only four go below four. So it's, aren't you, don't you want to listen? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it sound amazing? It's because four people will agree with you. <laughs> so, yeah, 444 people reviewed East Kissers on Storytelling. I'm assuming that because it's a small podcast, you are afraid to give your review. You are not hidden behind the, you know, the largeness of numbers. Whereas in, for the audiobooks, there are like 25,000 reviews total, so yeah. But there is at least one diehard that always gives a review. I don't know if it's always the same person, but I'm assuming so. And there are at least like regular four. I know I didn't always give a review to myself. <laughs> I did sometimes, but not always. So, and given the fact we were three, there is at least one person who's in it. So, <laughs> thank you, whoever you are. So, yeah, some comparison numbers. Does really matter? Do we have time? Yes. So, audiobooks. So, the audiobooks, they, like, they start with over a thousand reviews for the first book, which is the best one, by far. I do highly recommend listening to the first book. It's, it's entertaining. And then it's kind of, yeah, it depends on how you're persevering. Do you really want to listen to 47 books on this? But yes, yes. <laughs> um, but there's like a dedicated fan base. There's the median is 500 people are reviewing it, and that like obviously means there are more people listening than are actually reviewing, and it's basically enough for them wanting to give 
some random engineers a podcast <laughs> on like, and paying us for it. It's pretty amazing. So um, they would give out their books every every two weeks on Thursdays. That was their prerogative. And their mean rating is 4.44. I would say this is statistically significant. Yeah. Maybe ours aren't, but <laughs> these are proper. So, and if you look at these numbers, the low numbers here are kind of an indication of this reader not really resonating with the listeners. And that makes sense because she quit and then the readers go back up. <laughs> and here, it's basically the books become worse quality. Yeah. Or you kind of, like, when we were reading it, we kind of got the feeling that Monica just got bored. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of like she wants to make, like, everyone has to have their own book, and like every character, and then like, not all characters are pretty good. equal, and like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of weird um, side trips that she takes. But, if you listen, look at the actual readers, there are four. We start with uh, Theodore Blake. She starts, she does a great job. She really sets the tone. But I have it from my inside sources. She really didn't like reading it. <laughs> <laughs> or just like, I don't know, like, you're reading it like, in a very professional way. You have to do it very, like, you know, in a proper way, but then reading about incestuous relationships, <laughs> page on page on page, like hundreds and hundreds of pages of incest, <laughs> you're allowed to get a bit bored or feel like, you know, this is getting awkward. Enough is enough. So they change course. So after 13 books, she quits. Katrin Hopterath takes over. Phenomenal actor. And she starts basically acting out these books. And she doesn't realize how many characters are in a book. So there's a lot of voices to kind of maintain. And they're very interesting to listen to, but it's, you know, it's, I don't think she realized what she was taking on. And the reader's kind of like, you can't really do this. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I can just watch TV if this is what I want. So she quits, Svante takes over, and she does almost half of the series. Phenomenal job. And then, see if I can with Takes over. And basically, each book is around six and a half hours. You can speed them up. They have very nice voices to speed up to at least 1.2. 1.5 if you're in like, pinch of time, like I did, because I was always doing this just in time for uh, taping, but recommend it. Their reading speed is very varied, like compared to the page count, it's very interesting. They do not have the same distinct styles, but <clears throat> basically, if you want to listen to story, like listen to the Legend of the Ice People, it's available on Storytel. <laughs> there are 18,000 minutes. <laughs> it's amazing. It's sexy prose. Well, I kind of like It's basically there's sex for like the first five or six books, then it's like. Basically, oh, there's a pack in the cheek. Ooh, <laughs> amazing. A question? What is this lump? That one book that sucks, really yeah. sucks. This one. Oh, these are always read. This is a very short book. Okay. These are not ratings. These are hours. Yeah. And uh, reading time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to go back to the ratings, Whoa. this yeah. is when Kathy was reading. It's, just, <laughs> it's too much. But you're, you want to watch a movie for that kind of, okay. not the other way. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, feel free to contact me. The data is available. This is supposed that this was done in LaTeX and then it was converted to a PPT, and this is supposed to be Creative Commons share alike, but. Feel free to do what you want with it. Question? Yeah, without giving spoilers, what is your podcast about? <laughs> what, what are you talking about in this podcast? Um, the book. What, what's <laughs> happening in the books? So you're just generally taking the plot and displaying to the reader? Or? So, yeah, yes, I did not do a good job starting with this. 
Fair. <laughs> so um, we would read half the book. We had not read it before. So well, I say for Birna and Christine, who had read the first three or four books when they were 12, which they had forgotten, because in their memory this was quite PC. And then when we were reading it, this is quite weird topic to read about incestuous siblings and magical powers when you're 12. But okay, fine by me. Harry Potter is probably banned in some countries, so that is a market something more. Um, so we would read half the book beforehand, then we would talk about it, then give our thoughts like in a modern perspective, like what do we think of their life choices, does this make sense, how do we assume this, you know, pushing forward, and then in the latter half, for the, at least in the storytelling format, we would do uh, basically reflection and realize I was generally wrong. Except for if the if the rod goes in, which is a a very distinct episode about what she's doing with a um, the magical wand that witches go on to a psychedelic mountain. <laughs> I was correct because our plan, which is not related by blood. To any of us, and we have never known, contacted us. We are very grateful for that guy. Found um, like sources saying how in medieval times they would put stuff, like basically the dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Witches travel on dildos, magical dildos. So, yes. does that answer your question? <laughs> Some, yeah, tangents. Both of the podcasts in Iceland. So yes. Yes. Did you ever meet the author? So, um, going back a few slides, we talked about it in the beginning that we really wanted to go and meet her and ask if she was like interested in us or something. <laughs> and especially when, yeah, we we wanted to do it, or at least like go to Norway and do something with her. We're also afraid to send her the email because we tried to contact the publisher at least getting the ebooks and like no reply. But this is where she dies. Uh, no. Uh, then we thought about when we started doing our storytelling, we got story for money. It's actually not a lot of money, but still like, we talked about the story for money. We're like, yeah, maybe we should go and like Mr. Grave. And then like, it's in northern Norway. <laughs> it's expensive. They don't pay us enough. We have done 96 episodes. It still doesn't pay for three people to go to Norway. So, okay. so please listen, we get royal. Um, and then, like, fun facts here. Like, these are supposed to be ghost emojis, but don't be this way. But these are um, famous deaths. So, this is where. Do you know the cat name I should buy a boat? It's an Icelandic cat. He is reading Fréttabær. Fun fact. His name was Muri and he died here. I got inside information when he died and we did the him as the special cat of the week that time. Um, this is Mayor Stubbs. He is a, an honorary mayor of some Alaskan city. And he died here. Margit. Karlagant, which makes Shupa the most um, rich cat in the world. <laughs> he inherited all of his wealth to his uh, Persian. Okay. It's a Persian cat, white Persian cat. Um, this is Grumpy Cat, and this is a Little Bub. So the cats here. They both died. <laughs> or, yeah. Yes, question. I was wondering uh, the pages of the books. Was that the original in Swedish or the Icelandic translation? So, um, these numbers are these ones are these pages. I just literally check every single book and count its manual labor. But I'm assuming it's very similar than our, the original Swedish version and the Icelandic version of the 80s. I assume so. Give it some slack. Also, fun fact. 
there are two translators. I initially thought, well, it's not a fun fact, it's a very morbid fact. I thought that the translator had just gotten married because it's in the 80s and people maybe changed their names. She actually died, and they just found another woman named the same first name, and she found a new translator. So you didn't realize there was a new translator, but yeah, uh, morbid source finding. Yeah. Related to the data, but uh, so as I understand the story, yeah, uh, if you are having incestual relationships, yes, <laughs> you get magic powers. No, not necessarily. Sometimes you get magic powers without the other parent being um, also of each of it. So it could have been your brother or sister. <laughs> like, we, well, we don't know who this unknown is. We just know from the story she is a prostitute. <laughs> but she could have been original talent guy. Right? We don't know. We do know that Ma is so basically in the plotline, which is generally set in Sweden, Norway, and some parts Denmark. One time in Germany. It's like, what? Yeah, there's a couple of times in Austria. Um, so yeah, she slowly travels, but then mostly goes back to north. Um, they do go to Russia and go into the, the the Ural Mountains and are faced with perils and like Serbia and crap. And then they realize they're of the Tarantai nation because they have the same triangular shaped shoulders. <laughs> they have yellow eyes, just like them, and they feel like, oh, I'm so beautiful. So. Um, uh, it's a curse, it's a curse. curse. But they realize, because they are both cursed and they love each other, oh. they know they shouldn't help it. So from data you can infer that these prostitutes were actually, you know, cursed. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> using East Kisser inference, yes. <laughs> yes. Just like so you can say right from right. this timeline, Storytel is only publishing this because of us. <laughs> we have this massive influence. You are correct. It's maybe not true, but I, I don't want to believe that. Oma? Yes. Uh, the title three of the video, are you to collect the data from reading the books and creating this family tree by yourself? Um, no, Mark is a very nice person and she keeps a family tree from book three or four onwards. The JSON format. <laughs> <laughs> no. This was painstakingly, you know, looking at and zooming in like, it took me forever to realize this is Groa and not Groo. I was like, what does that mean? But I have to give it a chapter because otherwise my kinship to package and art doesn't compute. So I checked again, it's like, ah, it's just really, or, um, yeah. A question? Yes. Would you recommend reading the books before <laughs> listening to the podcast? So we do, we kind of Or can we just skip the books? <laughs> so we assume that the reader, like or the listener of the podcast has read it and he, like, he basically wants to be in a book club. <laughs> and he can talk to us while we're talking, but... I will always talk over them because that's what they've been all the time. And, and uh, as a fun tangent, because I like to go on tangents, so that's if you like where this is going, this is the podcast. You don't have to know anything, it's basically just me going back and forth. Um, basically, here we could have released and finished the last book, or like the book six, but we didn't because Birna was really poor at file management and lost her tape. <laughs> because she lived in Reynafjörður and we were like taping remotely and it's like, yeah. So, it's because of her. <laughs> but we did, I did see when we were like going back to my, uh, my documents, basically I like going through my Twitter feed <laughs> as at Iskizur. I see that I was like, we are uh, excusing ourselves for not being as regular as we were because we were quite regular until, yeah. 2018, we are not regular. Um, basically saying we could publish because Bimba doesn't really say anything. So we just have my <laughs> voice track and that should be enough. So you can still <laughs> publish yourself. <laughs>
So we get we get the gist of the story by listening yes. to the podcast. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, another person? Do you ever get the feedback from listeners that they were expecting different content from ice pussies? Um, I have a lot of nice facts because I suppose it sounds a bit vulgar, um, but that's not what this podcast is about. It's very uh, intellectual. Although, um, I did, so when I started this, I used to do the interviews for, like, as a consultant for Techno Affairs. And Lily used to call my podcast, like, I was a host at, for the Pizza Club, Pussy Port. It sounds better. But it's more like friends can say that, don't. It's ice cats. Um, yeah. I lost my train of thought. Your question was? <laughs> yes? So, as, as far as I know, there's a lot of resentment in the cat collective about the uh, use of cat face in uh, cat the musical. Yeah. And, uh, there, were, there were no cats, no real cats involved. <laughs> yes, yes. We did take the uh, cats musical as a special cat segment in one of the episodes. Yeah, you can so, listen to that one on story. So, do you know <laughs> what the cat collective feels about the use of uh, the cat eyes in, in uh, the Santa Um, I think they're I think they're happy with it because we are doing very um, we're doing representation and representation matters. <laughs> we are. We are calling cats by their proper name. This is Tartar Sauce. May she rest in peace. And it's Lillian Bubbles. But but you can call them Grumpy Cat, Dandel Bubble, you know. But we are very familiar with them. We call them by their proper names. So. Good to hear. Yes. And we do this with the utmost respect of having a laugh. <laughs> So, any more questions? Who's going to listen to your face? Uh, did the uh, Icelandic publication of the books bring uh, a data on David Spark incest? Or <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know about that, but what I do know, and, and what I was going to, like, so when I was initially going to do this uh, slide presentation, what David does it do? I was going to look at the um, how the naming of Icelandic uh, children who are influenced by the legend of the ice people. Because Heikir, which is a converted good guy, he was very prominent, he was actually quite grotesque, but a very good person, um, and was very prominent in the, in the books. This name had never before been in any census of the Icelandic population until after this book was released. So, after this book, nine months later, Heike was born into Iceland. And there are a couple, not many, and they're basically just after this. And there was a, like a massive spike of Sunnas after Sunna was presented in the Legend of the Ice People in book 3. So there is definitely influence. But uh, Field Strong doesn't have nice data to collect because like, only these like, my memes are available and like, I didn't know what to actually do. I didn't do it. Is it a book? Yeah. I want the API to do it in a fast like, For our next, if Mother ever has me on to do the Second edition of the Ice Cream Book. Because everyone here will have listened, then we get more people <laughs> wanting to listen to, and then maybe we can convince Storytel to let us talk about the warlock and the legend of the realm of light with a data perspective. A question? Uh, I was wondering about the names. Uh, yep. Were they translated or did she use Icelandic or. They Icelandic were translated, like roughly. But it's still like, Fengir is Tengir or Tan? No, Tangil is the Taran guy evil name. So there's, okay. So if you read the ice, Legend of the Ice People, you're always, it always starts with Fengir the bad. He's the bad, he's Voldemort, basically. There's a, yeah, I didn't go into this because it's out of scope. But so basically, Fengir the bad is this evil, evil person. That's one who wants to destroy the world. 
and he's basically ultimately it's basically Voldemort. So not saying J.K. Rowling stole the idea, but she stole the idea. He was like a little nothing entity, and he had like a uh, a henchman, Mr. Lynx, who's also a cat in real life. Um, and he's like doing his evil bidding until like he wants to like attack them, and that's why there's so many people towards the end of the Gantra. So there are like, the Fab plus five are trying to destroy him and his henchmen. <laughs> so they're always talking about thinking evil, but he isn't actually thinking evil. He's Tarnkin of the Tarn guy, because she realized like halfway through the book she needs to do some backstory after all. But there's also thinking the good, not to be confused. And then another fun fact, how she likes to name people, so she isn't like, J, like George R. R. Martin, but everyone has the same name. She's friendly to her audience, that she has distinct names, but everyone's named after each other. And now you think, how can that be? Do you know the answer? You just have to have the same first letter, and you're named after that person. So in true Market something of fashion. I named my first child after Think It the Good or Think It the Bad, depending on the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Any more questions on the Ice Cat Saga? Yeah. <laughs> you love this. <laughs> this is great. Does the story have a satisfying ending? <laughs> We're seeing as the author died. Yeah. <laughs> she, she presumably finished the series. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, so she did this. So the, the two other series, the the Warlock and the Legend yeah. of the Realm of Light, they are so basically they are a parallel universe. It's like they're they're the book themselves in the story. Yeah. Yes, let's do that. In the last book, um, the, 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 oh, okay, let's see. But it has a picture of herself and like where are your notes. She mentions Pink Floyd, it's quite, you can look at it here. Yeah. Um, she writes herself into the book. So in the 1960s, when she concludes her story, she is a young girl walking <laughs> in the same streets of North, like in the northern town of Northern Trondheim, where everything was set up and the last people were there. And she sees someone with yellow eyes. And, oh, I don't know, the last book is weird. <laughs> and it's kind of like a reflection of herself as a child and connecting herself and the tree. Interesting for you. So, yeah, read it. It's fascinating. Or listen to it. And listen to the podcast. <laughs> Give me royalties. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.